number of years ago in Cambridge, we, we set up a big event um, involving, we called it Cambridge Praise, and basically it was just a, an event uh, in the University Concert Hall, which uh, we managed to hire, and they gave it to us free for some reason. We call that divine intervention, or I don't know, slick talking or something. And so we got the entire University Concert Hall free, and we had big orchestra, uh, about uh, 60, 70 players in the orchestra, and a, a large choir of 80 or 90, and we sang vast uh, amount of different kinds of music, had lots of silence in the evening as well. Place backed out, extraordinary things happened. But in the orchestra, to get 60 players who were all kind of committed to the Christian faith, that's actually quite, quite hard. So we had a few gaps, so to speak, to fill. And I phoned some ver various people, and I was very open. I said, this is a Christian event, kind of cross between a concert and a service. If you're happy about doing that, you know, okay, but I'm going to be right up front what kind of event it is. And one of the people I rang was a 14-year-old. He was a very, very fine violinist who went on to, to the university. Um, and she sat in the second violins there. And um, w one of the pieces that we had in this evening was a huge, giant improvisation. Now, singers can improvise a bit, and we got the entire the vast congregation, we got doing all sorts of things. We had a kind of 16 part round, and you know, was, they, they were kind of enjoying themselves and waving hankies and all They were having a great time. And then, and a choir, we kind of gave stuff to. But then we asked the orchestra to improvise. And now, if you've played in an orchestra, I mean, it's not the kind of thing you're really asked to do very much, because that's what you've got to play, and anything else is extremely risky. And especially if you're a second violinist, you play exactly what's written in strict uniformity with everybody else. This, this woman, the 14-year-old, the and indeed four others we had to ask, all came to faith that night without any evangelistic address or any persuasion at all. And the key moment, or the key piece for this girl, I've never even met her, but I've heard she's told this story over and over again. The key piece was this giant improvisation. When something happened, or God, as it were, did something during this piece, the way it was constructed. And I've often thought, why this piece? And the reason, of course, I think, anyhow, is because a second violinist normally plays exactly what's written in strict uniformity with everybody else. Homogenized, as it were. And all the particularity and distinctiveness driven out of, very often. That's why it can be pretty soul-destroying playing second violin, or even first violin in a large group. There's about 16 normally, maybe about that, no, not twice so many, about 10 second violins normally. For the first time in her musical life, in her musical life, she was told she could improvise. Sure, we gave a chord pattern. Sure, there was a basic structure. But then it was up to her. She had to listen intensively to what was going on, so it was very, very corporate. But in that moment, she, as it were, became more fully herself, musically. And ultimately, in the spirit as well. The Holy Spirit is not out to homogenize people into one, but to make them more fully human in relation to other people. That's the Christian vision. Oh, if it were only like that in our churches. But that is church, so to speak. That is the body of Christ in action when that happens.